celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, this is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight Eastern Time. Okay, it's him. Once again, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, sir. Hi, Larry. Hey, Alex. Yeah, I had to go close the door because there was this. I have a guest staying here. Um, Buddy Love, who you know. And Buddy Love, he, from way from 100 years ago, of course. Yeah, he's staying here, and along with his lovely wife. And then he has a friend over uh, today who they're just sitting out there talking, and I had to close the door. Can I drop the name again? Drop the name. Yeah, uh, he's Paul Schaefer. So. <laughs> you were the elite hangout at yeah. Bennett's household. Yeah, the elite hangout at Bennett's household. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, you remember Paul Schaefer from the two times you were from on the two, I, I remember the, the first. One of the things that got me going the first time was he. I could hear him laugh very hard at one of my jokes. That uh, was helpful. Yeah, yeah so uh, I it, it, appreciate uh, Paul Schaefer. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, that's great. See, and that happens. Yeah. It's uh, you know, uh, what was it? I was at uh, we uh, speaking of somebody else. Will Durst was in town, and we went to see his show. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. He's back there. All right. Went to see his one man show, and um, um, now my wife has a problem, and that is that she works very hard, and she has a tendency, right, to kind of when we're watching television, fall asleep while we're watching mm-hmm. TV. Well, we go to see him, Will, <laughs> and all of a sudden I look over and she's nodding out. <laughs> Now, it's not because Will isn't doing a great job. And it's not because the show isn't interesting. It's because this is just what she does. I'm sure she goes to a major Broadway show that she just paid $180 to see and falls asleep in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had to keep hitting her because I know what it's like to stand on stage and look at one of the rows and somebody sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst than being heckled. Yeah. It's worse than being heckled. So I had to kind of always punch her and wake her up. Um, but, you know, it, it, I've, it's, I've been told by comedians, tell me if I'm right, that you could be in a, with an audience in which everybody in the audience is laughing their heads off at you. And if there's somebody in the front row with his arms folded, not laughing, that's the one person you pay attention to. Yeah, you got to focus on that one because we're so uh, goddamn needy. We have to have everyone love us. So if there's one person out there. Yeah, I mean, audience can be going crazy, but if that guy's yeah. sitting there with his arms folded, you just that, that's enough to drive you crazy. Right? Yeah, oh. You know, I used to, Shecky used to say, if you ever want to come down to the Letterman Show, be my guest, but you're going to have to sit in the balcony. Then I said, why? And he said, well, number one, it's better in the balcony. Most people think uh, because at a TV show, there are cameras in front of you. And you can, you're above the cameras if you're sitting in the balcony. He said, but secondly, Dave doesn't want anybody, including CBS executives, sitting in the front row. And I said, why? He says, because he does. He feels that he wants people sitting in the front row who want to be there, you know, right, who, did, right. who had to go to some lengths to be in that front row. And then he's got an appreciative audience. But if he's got a bunch of executives in the front row, they've all got their arms folded going, well, is this what we're paying yeah. for? You know? So, I mean, I, I always notice that if I did a show, although a lot of times you can't see the audience that well, um, people don't understand that, that the, in a lot of theaters there's so many lights shining in your face that you don't see the oh, audience. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, you're blind. Uh, you, but you do hear the audience, you know, and, and you do play to that. So, uh, But if you see somebody and they're not laughing, I'm sorry. 
That guy is everything. He's the only person in the audience. Yeah, it can really throw you off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is anybody? Have you ever been to a show where one person really threw you off? No, with me, it's usually the majority of the audience. <laughs> 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 Uh, so I was, uh, I've yeah. never had to deal with that problem. They all hate me. I think they, they, what, the worst thing, uh, maybe even worse, is when, uh, and it's painful to watch, when you see people start to walk out on a performer, not just comics, but uh, suddenly if two people, suddenly one person or two people get up and leave, that'll open the floodgates, and then everyone starts going. That's really hard to watch. Oh, have you had that happen? Uh, I think I, only when I did Bobby Bitter with your, uh, our old friend, David Feldman, that's, uh, but now let's explain, so I, that's, time, that's but, one thing we've never explained to this audience is Bobby Bitter. <laughs> now explain. Do we want to go into that? It, yeah. Explain Bobby Bitter. Oh, uh, okay. It was an alter ego character and David Feld. it was like, I, I played this really old comic who supposedly had this fantastic career and david would interview me on stage and it was just it was very offensive and edgy at the time i think and uh, a lot of people liked it and a lot of people hated it uh, i don't know anybody that hated it everybody kept saying oh, we, oh, oh, when we did it in the clubs a lot of people would walk out they were just really pissed off what, what uh, for instance explain to the audience some some of the things you might have said that Okay, Bobby had a telethon where he'd come out with a little crippled Timmy and say, you know, folks, cerebral palsy ain't as funny as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and he had, you had a voice you did for him, kind of. Yeah, I, I can't even, a very raspy voice, I can't even do it anymore. But it, really, it hurt to do it, I remember that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it played pretty. We did it in your show a few times. It played oh, pretty well on it. radio. They loved it. But you know what? Here's the thing about my radio show: people would listen to it every day, hopefully, and then they would come to a show that we were doing. And so you didn't even have to. Where a comedian who nobody's ever seen before, the first five minutes of his act is establishing who he is and getting the audience used to the rhythm of what you do. Am I right? Mm -hmm. In other words, you have probably have some piece you use when you're in Duluth that is your introductory piece so they will understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh, but when you did my show, you never had to do that because everybody knew where you were coming from. They heard you on the radio. Mm -hmm. and, and so my audiences were the easiest audiences to play to because they, they were ready for you. Yeah. Yeah, so, and they still walked out on you. But that's uh, <laughs> no. I mean, people. Uh, people. I would go out and I would uh, do my my little MC thing, and I'm not a comedian, as you know. And yet, I would even kill. You killed because I would just you know do things that they related to from the radio show, and people would go, "Gee, you really should be a stand-up. You really get some laughs," and I go. No, I'm getting laughs off of stuff I've already taught them. You know, this mm -hmm. is not, uh, you know, put me up in front of a strange audience in Duluth, Minnesota. Wait a minute, hold on a second. My golf ball has disappeared. Can I explain my golf ball? I have a golf ball that sits here and that I rub my feet back and forth across it and it takes care of my plantar's fasciitis. Isn't that cool? No. Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, I just lost it again. What's with me? Stay there. Uh, damn it. Um, but I mean, I, I, you know, if I did in Duluth, Minnesota, nobody knows who, who's this guy? Why is he funny? You know, so. No, but you were a good MC, which is uh, a very, uh, hard thing to do. Well. Yeah, I mean, the MC's job is, is not to try and top the comics. The MC's job is to set the table for the comic. Yeah, so. Uh, not many people do that very well. I thought I was a pretty good MC. Oh, yeah. you do. You're great, yeah. Yeah, you know, but uh, I, um, you know, we, and I do some bits from the radio show. I would have, have people in the audience ask me questions and, I would ad lib the whole thing because it's the way I do radio. 
Uh, and uh, so I, I, you know, I survived. I survived. I think my favorite shows with you might have been the Christmas shows we did were great. Well, the supper with Schwarzman. Yeah, with the and uh, that we usually do those at the Fairmont. I just yeah. those are really fantastic shows. Yeah, with well, so the whole fun. like ten piece orchestra. Yeah, um, yeah, I was like. Uh, that was really like old big time radio. It was great. Yeah, well, the reason I did it is because I grew up on big old time radio. Yeah. And that was the radio I always wanted to do. Uh, and to me, that is still the only radio. I mean, there isn't radio anymore. Forget it. You know? No. The idea of, to me, of radio was it entertained you. And I don't think there's anybody out there particularly entertaining people on the radio. They they use other people's talents uh, as their show, which means, by that I mean they play records. See, I always hated playing records. I, I, I was a disc jockey for quite a bit of my early career. And I kind of hated it because I felt that I was using somebody else's talent rather than mm -hmm. relying on my own. But in those days, we were told, you know, even though you were playing top 40, to be entertaining between the, the records to tell a joke or to be humorous or something, you know. But even that's dead now. <laughs> you know. It's so pathetic if you turn well, on radio uh, now. <laughs> in this business, I'm an anachronism. I'm sorry. You know, uh, I... I uh, I don't fit anywhere. So that's, that's, uh, well, it's their loss because, uh, that was good entertainment. Well, I mean, but I was trying, I was doing really old fashioned radio. They say, how innovative Do you have a live studio audience. This is not innovative. You know, that's the way radio was. Yeah. At one point we were going to, I got, I was working for play incorporated. And I had convinced them that maybe we should look into renting or maybe buying uh, the uh, old NBC studios in San Francisco. You know, the ones that are Mason and O'Farrell? Yeah, yeah. A beautiful uh, building, yeah. beautiful old Art Deco building. And off one side of it, there's a big, like, mosaic mural of a a hand on a dial, and then all the peoples of the world having the signal going out to, you know. And it stands about three stories high, that mural. It's still there, I believe. And the building was wonderful, and it was it used to be the NBC Red and Blue Network Studios. It was where they had Radio City in New York, right? And they had Radio mm -hmm. City in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. Uh, this one was called Radio City San Francisco. I still have the original brochure from the place, and uh, which I found when we were taking a tour around. They said, oh, look what we found. And they found the, a bunch of these folios. They've been passed out in like 1939 when the place was first opened up, and it's Radio City San Francisco. Wow. And um, all the studios were still there. And what I wanted to do was, the idea was this. We would do a national show every night out of, out of San Francisco, out of those studios, out of those old studios. There was a Studio A there where my father used to play. It had a room for a studio audience. It had a stage, the whole thing. It had a, a, a booth to the side that was the control booth, and up above it was the sponsor's booth where the sponsors would watch the shows being done. And it was a magnificent place. And then there were all these smaller studios as well. Uh, and what I want, what we were planning on doing was doing a nightly show out of there, complete with an orchestra and everything, and turning it into a nightclub as well. So that what you would do is you would come in and you would watch the show and then you would have dinner, and then we would have the band play music, and you would dance, right? Yeah, great idea. Great idea. Just was too prohibitive financially. Just too prohibitive, so we never did it. 
but I, I thought it would have been wonderful. We were going to call the we were going to call the club itself Studio A and Radio, Radio uh, Studio A at Radio City, and we were going to call the whole building Radio City. Uh, that would have been great. But it was huge. What and what happened is they had the Blue Network or red uh, they had red and blue network. One was uh, on the bottom floors. One was on the top floors. And then years later, they, the NBC was forced to get rid of, I think it was the Blue Network, and it became ABC. So ABC was upstairs. So the outside says uh, KNB, it said KNBR and, or KNBC when it was originally started. Or no, even earlier than that, KPO and KGO. Uh, and it was, it would have been, it would have been great. I would, uh, that, that was my big dream was to be able to, have us own that building, or at least have the lease on it, um, and then be able to do all, uh, open it up as a uh, because it was a, uh, uh, it was it was KBHK TV at the time. Yeah, forty four. And KBHK was leaving there, so it was a question of who was going to go in there next. And it was just, it was a beautiful building. They've kind of ruined it a little bit. The outside of it had all the there were no windows. There were these you remember these 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 uh, glass bricks that you, you couldn't see through it, but the light could come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was trimming the entire each floor of the building. There were no windows looking out on the street, but there was all this light coming in. It was wonderful. It was just yeah. wonderful. Wonderful building. And considered the height of Art Deco at the time. And I remember, here's the best part. I remember the folio that I have. They had a kitchen. And they had a chef in that kitchen. And he was standing there with the kitchen with that OK sign with his fingers. <laughs> And overused. Yeah, but they had that. And then where the elevators were, they had shafts. And there was a microphone at the top of the shaft and a speaker at the bottom. Guess what they used that for? An echo chamber. Wow, really? Yeah. So that was built, the echo chamber was built right into the building. And it was natural echo. It wasn't like reverb. It was it was natural uh, echo. And... Uh, a lot of great shows came out of there over the years. Uh, uh, Jack Benny, whenever he came to San Francisco, would do his show out of that building. And uh, so would a lot of other people. I mean, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, then in later years, Jack Webb did his first series out of there called Pat Novak for Hire. Uh, it was a big facility. It was a major NBC facility for broadcasting, so... Anyway, it, 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 what a beautiful building. And it's still there, but they did away with all those glass blocks, and that kind of ruined it. I think oh, they, really? I think they, put uh, in, well, I think they actually put in windows. The city knows how to ruin everything. So. Well, it's not so much the city. It's owners of these properties that don't know their true worth and their true history. And I don't know that that building was ever landmarked. See, it should have been landmarked, yeah. Yeah, if it had been landmarked, you wouldn't have had that problem. But it was landmark. It wasn't landmarked. I don't think so. Anyway, you know, that that was another thing that got away from me. I would have, and uh, uh, I, I think want to be back at the. I want to do another show at the Fairmont. That was so much fun. The building wanted only. Uh, what a million dollars to buy it! Really? Oh yeah. my God! I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, you would have made money on that. Oh, I'm sure today, you know. But, but you uh, can't you know. buy a cracker box house in a sunset for a million. So. Well, I guess we are coming up on Christmas, so that would have been one of my uh, my shows at the Fairmont. You know, yeah. I, if people, you know, you you asked me to come back and do a reunion show, and I wonder how many people. Remember me now in San Francisco. Well, yeah. uh, when Bob Rubin and I mentioned your name of the punchline last month, that place went insane. So I think there'd be quite a few. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I just, you know, like people say, well, you should go back to San Francisco and find a radio station, do your radio show. And I go, you know, it worked then. I don't know if it would work now. 
Number one, because the expectations of uh, the audience are different. They, they, they're they used to something entirely different on their radio now. All right. Uh, and um, what I was trying to do when I did it, I've been using this term a lot today, was, was in and of itself an anachronism to do a live show with comics doing comedy and singers singing and an orchestra playing everybody on and off and so on was an old, old concept. In fact, I had to help them uh, help the station reinvent it because there were simple things that they didn't know in the beginning and I had to kind of, once I would listen to it, i go, oh, yeah, of course that's wrong. They never put microphones on the audience because they didn't think they had to. The microphone, in radio, the microphones are only on the people who are talking. But no, in the old radio days, you had the audience mic'd because there's nothing worse than a comic. And I found this was what was happening is comics were doing their comedy and you couldn't hear anybody laugh. Yeah, so you said, oh, in the air, it sounds like they're bombing. It sounds like they're bombing on the air. So what I did is I said, I want two microphones pointing out at the audience and then balance that audience against the comedians. And then it, all of a sudden it came alive, you know. But those were things we had to relearn because it had been so many years since anybody had done that kind of radio. And that was the radio I grew up on. That was the radio I wanted to do. And I feel blessed that at least for a short time, I was able to do it in San Francisco. You know, and those supper with Schwarzmans were the complete idealization of of and the complete uh, completion of a dream that I had about doing radio. That was the radio show I wanted to do. Well, it was a great idea. I mean, if I had had my way, I mean, at least I was able to get a studio audience on my show, something nobody else has done since. Um. Uh, but if I had had my way, there would have been a, an orchestra there every morning, too. <laughs> it would have been a full-blown yeah. show. Because I remember waking up in when I was a kid to a show called The Breakfast Club with Don McNeil. And he, he did it out of, I think he did it out of Chicago. I may be wrong, but I think he did it out of Chicago. And... He had an orchestra, and it was good morning, breakfast clubbers, and howdy do ya, you know, ba -ba 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 -ba. first call to breakfast, you know, and then they have a march. They uh, halfway through the show, they have a march around the breakfast table, you know, and the band would play a march, and that to me was radio. That's what I woke mm -hmm. up to, and I thought, you know, I want people to be able to wake up to that. It's better than playing them a fucking record they've heard 20 times. <laughs> 50 times. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, you, you know, you were on most of those uh, Fairmont Most shows. of those, yeah. I think we did. Usually it was a Fairmont. I think we might have done one at... Uh, no, we Bimbo. did Bimbo's. A couple of years we did at Bimbo's. Yeah, that was a good we one. We changed orchestras on that one. Buddy Love became our orchestra. A very good orchestra, by the way. Just terrific. Oh, yeah. That was just added so much. To the, having that orchestra was amazing. So Yeah. Before, it was Dick Bright, and he was very good, too. But I really thought that Buddy's band was just extraordinary. Uh, closer to the kind of thing I remembered when I was an, 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 uh, a kid, you know, on radio. Uh, but, uh, so anyway, here, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, waxing about the old days, right? <laughs> well, you, you're how old now? You're 66. Six. So you grew up about 10 years later, maybe 12 years later than I did from radio. Yeah, I yeah. still remember growing up and listening to Jack Benny and, you know, Bergen and McCarthy and Burns and Allen and The Shadow and all that stuff. Uh, you, about 12 years later, probably didn't grow up with that. No, I did grow up, though. Uh, Jack Benny had a TV show, and mm -hmm. I loved him when I was about uh, 10 years old. Yeah, well, that was just an extension of the, of the, of the radio show right. being done mm -hmm. on TV. Uh, but very well done because he was, he was television ready. He was a vaudeville actor, so he, he was capable of that. A lot of other shows they tried to put on TV from radio did not work, you know. 
but anyway, anyway, so I, uh, you know, I guess I yearn for the old days. Call well, me an we old. All, but, uh, well, well what did work? Uh, let's see, Benny. Uh, Dragnet came from radio, right? Uh, yes, I. Well, yeah, I. Am I? Did it start on radio? No, I don't think so. I think they they did it on TV and had a radio component at the time. But okay. his first show was, as I said, Pat Novak for Hire out of San Francisco. So, uh, but you know, hey, listen. Listen, another an, another uh, wonderful half hour of our life has been wasted. Yearning for the past. <laughs> Yearning for the past with the incomparable Larry Bubbles Brown, who I wind up doing a lot of the talking because he encourages me to talk. Because you know so much. Oh, yeah, I know so this, much. But I know you can put in a thimble. No, but this, stuff, this stuff's fascinating to me, the radio and the history of that. It's amazing. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I got I to stop playing that one, okay? I got to stop playing that one because you hear how it's, I slowed it down and it just isn't right. Listen. Celebrating four it, years. You hear that music? Yeah. You hear this music? Celebrating four years. Now that's better. And that one, celebrating four years. That's fine. Then we go here and it's a little off. Celebrating four years. So but you can't hear it. Okay, well, anyway, I'm just having fun playing all our various imagers, we call them. Imagers. Yes, okay. Let me see here. Let me let me get our uh, our uh, uh, our stuff online here. You know, I've had trouble with... with uh, uh, Skype the last couple of days, not uh, not here on this show, but I do these interviews, you know, like I just did with Larry Bubbles Brown, and uh, uh, the problem is, is that, uh, and I did one with my wife the other day, my ex-wife, uh, Ronnie, the other day, and in the middle of it, it just dropped out, just dropped out. Now, I use another line, uh, so maybe that's the problem. Either that or it's Skype trying to fuck with people who don't want to change uh, to their new system. So we'll see. Yeah, so far, this show, it hasn't broken down at all. So anyway, give us a call. Um, it's time for you to call us uh, so we can uh, 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 talk about stuff with our citizen panel. And uh, they will be here any moment now. I just feel it. I just feel it in my bones. Okay. And come on, guys. Uh, our number, in case you want to know what it is, is GabNet Live on Skype. If you want to know other ways to get a hold of us or how to get Skype or any of that information, you go over to GabNet.net, which is our website. Don't worry. You'll still be able to see me talking and the citizen panel talking over there because over there, we also run the show live at GabNet Live. So at GabNet.net. Yeah, okay. And there's a whole thing on the right-hand side of the page. It'll tell you exactly all the, all the hoops you have to go through to be able to get to be part of a citizen panel on this program, which uh, looks tonight like something nobody calls to be on. So I'll just sit here drinking my coffee. And uh, I have, I've just been so woozy the last couple of days. I've got to stop. I don't know. Here's, here's my conundrum. Uh, I keep talking about this, this uh, uh, gabapentin that my doctor gave me for the, for the numb feet, and it does make it feel moderately better, okay? But it, what it, it did made me incredibly nice, and so I've been very sweet towards, uh, towards my lovely wife, and especially in these trying times with her accident, uh, I've just been a gem. And, and I'm afraid to go off it for figure, f fear that I'll be a, a terrible person again. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, but it, but w being on it makes me woozy. It makes me forgetful. Like last night, I, I accidentally forgot to start the stream for the audio at the beginning of the program. Hi there, Jeff. How are you? Uh, do you find that as you get older, they give you drugs that they wouldn't give you when you were younger? Oh, I have all kinds of drugs now. Yeah, but I mean stuff that they wouldn't have given you when they were younger to solve a problem. 
Nobody would give a uh, a 25 year old gabapentin, even if they even if they had epilepsy. I think, you know, which is what the drug was originally created for. I, I don't know that. Yeah. I don't have that experience. Yeah. Well, anyway, so it, when it, I was younger, I didn't have to take any medications. Uh, maybe an aspirin once. In a while. So simple tasks I do every day by repetition here. I find I'm fucking up on, but. It could be because I'm so sick and tired of the repetition that I kind of go into a brain fart. <clears throat> Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? You know, I, I found that uh, I go to pick things up and I drop them, uh, that I just don't have the dexterity that I used to have. Really? I don't drop stuff. That's yeah. not my problem. I do bump, bump into walls occasionally, but they say that this drug can do that to you. You know. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just the uh, last, last couple of years, uh, you know, I, I just don't have the ab ability to, to do the fine, uh, what is it, motor skills. Yeah, I, I've been, you know, I've been looking for um, a, a, a group of people to aim this show at that will be an exclusive for those people. And I finally decided what it has come by attrition is the old fart program. Yeah, what, what, what were you doing this afternoon? Uh, I got something that said you were live streaming. Yeah, I was uh, playing. But, but I, I was, a, I, was, I, was play, I was playing around with live stream, and I accidentally, when I turned it on, didn't t t turn off the notify uh, uh, viewers. So the, I did more of it, and I I didn't notify the viewers. But I'm, I apologize to anybody who was put off by that. I was I was trying to work with their with their switcher. Uh, and see if I could make it work well. Uh, uh, yeah, I was, but it, it well, uses I up. Noticed. The trouble is, it eats up CPU like crazy, and so this machine really can't hack it. So I have to buy a machine. And I, you know what? I had go bad on me tonight, but uh, it's one of the oldest ones I have. I have storage drives that are on my network. They're network drives, right. and I had no, one go out, and it's like it's got to be six years old, seven years old, and I don't know what was on it. So I can't, I don't even know what I lost. Thank God it wasn't the porn drive. What would I do? The porn drive went. Hey, what do you do with the porn drive now? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, a lot. Yeah. A lot, yeah. You remember when you used to be able to do that? Anyway. No. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a fleeting memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, now it takes you all night to do what you used to be able to do all night. Yeah, it's uh, a <laughs> uh, But I, uh, no, I, uh, uh, so I, I've got to move a lot of, like I have a whole disc full of films and things like that that I took off from here, and I really have to make a backup drive for that. You know, but it's it's on a network drive, and I have to make a just a regular backup drive of it. But now yeah. you go out, you can get eight terabyte drives for $119 at Costco, but you can't find these network drives anywhere. So and those are the yeah. 54, they must be the 5400 RPM drives, not the 7200 RPM right, drives. Because right. I just bought three tonight. Uh, I bought three four terabyte drives and they were $112 each. And that but was they were, the, they, were the, they were the faster 7200. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I uh, haven't even looked to see what they were, but I assume they're probably 5400, you know. They have to be at that price. But I don't care if I use them just for storage. I don't care, you know. That, that, well, I I, I plan on using them for streaming and 4K streaming. So I wanted the faster the faster drives. Okay, but streaming on what? Well, to my uh through my like Fire TV into my into my TVs. Yeah, but how do you do it? They're not network drives, are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, no, I bought a QNAS tonight. QNAS. Yeah, it's a it's a a, a RAID uh, five uh, NAS device. Yeah. It, 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 okay, so it's called QNAS, and it's only a hundred and twelve dollars. No, the, no, 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 no. The, the drives were. The, I paid box. I paid 169 bucks for the for the device, I which see. is what made me buy it because the price was so amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then I went out looking for the drives for it tonight, and I I just got the drives. How is that Q spelled? Is that just Q Nap is Q the name of the company? Q Nap. Yeah, it's being it's a, it's for sale right now. Like it's Q, uh, Q N A P. 
uh, give me a second and I'll tell you for exactly, but I believe it's so that's, QNAP. That's similar to my Drobo, except a lot cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Q, so it, it's Q, I bought it. QNAP? NAP? Q, yeah. Dub, dub, uh, on Whoop.com, under computers, their thing today is a QNAP TS 328 personal cloud. But yeah, but how do they spell system. QNAP? QNAP. Oh, QNAP. Okay. And I read the reviews on it. I watched some video reviews on um, uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. and the price was the price is 170 bucks, and it holds the three drives, and it's got two one gig ports on the back, which is awesome. It's got some USB three ports on it. Um, so one of them's a backup drive, and the other two. No, 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 the... nope. Just three drive. You could do it that way. You can do a RAID one and have two drives, and then have one drive as a, uh, you know, as a single. Or right. yeah, you're right. In a RAID three, one is you're going to get. So I put four terabyte drives in there. I'm going to get eight terabytes of space. Right. If I configure it in a RAID five, which I'm planning on doing. How hard yeah. is this to configure? Very, very simple to configure. If you if you look at the video, well, suppose a, it, so suppose I just want to, it, it'll take up to three drives, right? Takes three. Drives, suppose right. I want those three drives to be online. You can just do it so they all three are online. Then it's just a, yeah, you know, that'd a bunch be rate zero, right? That'd be JBob, just a bunch yeah. of disk. Oh, okay. And then you, you just could put, do it that and way And you too. just put that into your Ethernet, and they all show up, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, yeah. The the box I've got has five drives. Yep. Of, of, yeah, and uh, two of them are backup, so it's RAID 6. Right, you're doing a RAID 6, uh, it's five drives, so it's going to be you're, three you're, plus You're two. confusing yeah. me here. I, I, this is not what I care about. What I care about is I go to wook.com, W-O-O-T. Woot, woot, W-O-O-T.com. Oh, and look under, it's, it's actually a, it, it used to be an independent thing, but Amazon I, bought it up about four years ago. Or mm -hmm. three years ago. And if you go to Woot.com and you look under the computer, across the top, they have mm -hmm. yeah. all these different deals. If you go under computer, you'll see that the deal of the day is um, this QNAP device. And if you sign in with your Amazon, um, when you go to buy it, if you sign in with this, with your Amazon credentials, it's free shipping. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll check into it. Uh, that's that's interesting because they own it. Yeah, yeah. Go to go to YouTube. Well, first go to go. To, this is what I did. I saw it there, and I was like, "Hmm, that's a really good." Yeah, price. but do I have to buy it today, or will they be on sale tomorrow? No, it'll be gone tomorrow. It oh. goes away at one a.m. Uh, it goes away at, every night at one at midnight Central Time. Yeah, the deals all change. No. Yeah. So when they sell out, they're sold out. If they don't sell out at at one at one a.m. Eastern time, the deals all change over yeah. to the next day's deals. So if you don't get it tonight, you won't get it. Mm -hmm. So, but it, but it'd just be like twenty bucks more, right? They won't sell it. It's not available for sale. This oh, really? is it, it, yeah, it's just not available for sale. Hmm. It's it's taken down. Well, wait a minute. If I if I were to look at the, my uh, 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 let me see here. I'm looking at the. Uh, I'm on Amazon. What if I put in QNAPs? Let's see if they have it on here. It's probably for sale for there like two hundred and forty-nine dollars. What's there. the What's the number on it? It is the QNAP. Is it a four bay? TS three two eight personal cloud NAS. It's a uh, three bay. Well, this is a T. They have the TS. They don't have that one. But let me see here. QNAP and. Um, Oh, yeah, they're kind of expensive. Yeah, no, wait a minute. QNAP, uh, U.S. Personal Cloud with three, huh? how, how many drives? It doesn't say how many. A personal cloud NAS. It looks like it has two drives there. Uh, you know, I'll... I'll here's, uh, the, here's the 328 on, on uh, Amazon. It's 229. Two, 229? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the name of it again? The ETS... QNAP TS-328. 328. Oh, it's 229 on, on, uh, on Amazon right now. Yeah. Uh, well, I see the 328. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. 
Let me go here. There we go. Oh, the 328. It's 229. You're right. And it's got three bays on it. It's very right. nice. Yeah. That's the exact same model. Now, what I did was I, I went to YouTube yeah. and I watched all of the videos for the reviews mm -hmm. on the QNAP TS328. Yeah. Just to see. It, they give you a, some great insight. They show you how they set them up. They give you all kinds of information. And you listen to people give you an idea of how how feature rich it is and you know yeah. all the things you could do with it and uh it's pretty cool and so you can take you you, you just put any you put hard drives and you just take a normal hard drive out of the box and slap it in there right that's right that's right and right. And, it, and the faster the better is what you're saying that is correct yeah but you could use the 5400 if you wanted to sure can oh boy well maybe i'll get this if i can't get it in time tonight i'll uh I'll, I'll go, uh, uh, so, and if, if, can you order it using your Amazon account, basically? Yeah, you would log, you, you would log in, as soon as you press, when you go to uh, the Woot page and you click, I want to buy one, or I want one, or whatever it says, mm -hmm. it'll put it in your cart, and then you'll click checkout, and then it'll say, use your Amazon, you can, you can create an account on Woot's site, yeah. and then they'll charge you, I think, six bucks to ship. Or you can, it'll say, use your Amazon Prime account and get free shipping. And you can also use your credit card that's on, on Amazon? Amazon. Um, I don't think it has access to that. I don't, uh, that's a good question. I, I it's not, um, well, I'll, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You'd have to play with that. I'll, I'll check it when I'm over with. But you said midnight central time. We're not, all, uh, well, we're off. So 1 a.m. Yeah. our time. Well, I'd have to make a quick. Every night at 1 a.m. So you'd have to do it pretty quick. Well, let me see here. Let me go to Woot.com. Let's see what we get here. Woot.com. What's, what's the basis for this Woot.com as a site? What's so its... I learned about Woot.com probably about 12 years ago, and it used to be a deal a day. Mm -hmm. The way it worked was there was only one deal, and mm -hmm. when it ran out, it could run out 10 minutes after they put it up, or it could run all day. And people would run to get there to, at, you know, at midnight or 1 a.m. to see what the deal was. Mm -hmm. And you never knew it was going to be. Typically, it was technology kind of stuff, you know. And uh, and I've bought many, many things over the years on Woot's website. Then Amazon bought it, and then they increased it. They, they put all these different categories, yeah. kitchen and electronics and mm -hmm. clothing and all kinds of stuff. And those are all one deal a day. And then there are some other deals. If you if you scroll down the page, you'll see under electronics, there's a whole bunch of other deals which will be there until they sell out. But the main deal on under each expires at 1 a.m. Eastern time. Proceed to checkout. Okay. $169.99. Okay. Amazon. Log in with Amazon. There's my login. Sign in with the secure server. I just signed into Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Woot email account? No, continue to Woot.com. What? Have a Woot account? No, continue to Woot.com. Okay. But I wanted to check out and check that out. Enter your shipping and payment information. Oh, okay. So you got to do all that. Wait a minute. Guys talk to each other. I'm going to go get my wallet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> <coughs> so what's in the news today? Anything new and exciting? I didn't really hear anything that was all that earth shattering no. today. It was fairly no. quiet, except uh, Trump did a Fox News interview. Did you hear that? No. Well, he was on me. Fox News tonight and they threw him softball questions. The whole, you know, he won't go on a real network where they would challenge him. So he went on Fox and the woman just kind of like lobbed some softballs at him. And he he started saying things. Well, I never directed yeah, Cohen to do anything ball. illegal. I, yeah, I, I don't think that matters. Making of course it doesn't money matter. For they should give you something for free. You know? Yeah. Um, let me see here. Because I'm going to, I'm, 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 uh, let me see here. My full name is Bennett Schwarzman. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll attest to that. Payment method. Uh, uh, let me On see. Time. Good looks. <laughs> okay, that's my address. Okay. Credit card number. I want to use <coughs> this one. God, Go I ahead. love these things that automatically fill in for you. You know? 19. There we go. 
Uh huh. Uh, Bill, Bill Meyer is shooting into a center what? above. No, Ben Schwarzman, and I need uh, post office box. What's, what's a Google Pixel 2? That just came up. Under what? Uh, under. Oh, that's a, a phone. That's a phone. Oh. Let me make sure that I have the billing address. So, Phil, you didn't know about you didn't know about Woot? Nah. Oh wow! I thought everybody knew about Woot. No, I never. Last heard. night, I didn't never even know about Trump. Trump. <laughs> okay, it, it was the fun they used to have a thing on woot that i had never been successful in getting they used to call it a bag of crap <laughs> and it would go up at the at 1 a.m and everybody waited for a bag of crap because every bag of crap was different you never knew what you were going to get and it cost 5.99 for the bag of crap yeah. And it would, you never knew what you were going to get in it. People would report all kinds of fun things. They gave up on the bag of crap. Then they do woot offs every once in a while. And a woot off is where, in fact, I think there are a couple of woot offs going on tonight on a few of those. Anytime you see on woot where you see like siren kind of things, yeah, undershirt, gourmet, and um, clearance, you see the lights above the, the, um, yeah, above the, the off. I see them. Yeah. Yeah. So the wood off means that those items keep changing all day long. And so that item might be there till it sells out. They they're probably just getting rid of a lot of stock that they, you know, that like if they have any of these QNAPs left over, it may wind up on a wood off, right? And oh, so they they change it. They is... change every hour, they'll change every 15 minutes. You never know when when the the, the categories are going to change. And so I think it's so it's fun when there's a wood off going on. Now, you can get on clearance, they've got a Ring Video Doorbell 2. That looks interesting, I, except I don't need a doorbell. <laughs> I'm in an apartment. <laughs> it's funny. It's not, right. it's not accepting my credit card. Yeah. And it is my credit card. Yeah, okay. Isn't that the one you found? No, <laughs> this, is, this is my credit card, damn it. And they're not accepting it. Try a different one. I, you use an American what Express? It, or? What's the error? Um, it, uh, it, it it just says it, it's not not an accepted credit card or something like that. Hold on. What card are you using? I'm using my credit card that I use all the time. I, is it an American Express or a no. Visa Mastercard? It's a Visa. Well, that should work. I use Visa so all the check time. Out there again. Your payment authorization was denied. That's ridiculous. Yes. You have been declined. No, this is the right thing. You know what might have happened? happened. You, what? You're, you're, you know what might have happened? What? You might have uh, the credit card company might have declined it because they're not they don't recognize the um, yeah they, it's like yeah you never shopped there before they might, so that might have happened. Yeah, you might have a security thing on your card uh, that you might have to call and release. Try a different card. No, no. Well, I can try a different card. Change shipping and payment. Let me see here. Uh, I'll uh, edit. Uh, I want to use, uh, let's try, uh, here, let's uh, try American Express. All right. Um, a serve and con save and continue. Save. Place your order. You can get a trailer there of crap. There we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There, it went through. Yeah, you might have to call and get the other card released. Activated, yeah, after yeah. that. Hmm. Uh, well, anyway, well, hold. they got to log in with Amazon. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. If you log in with Amazon, you get free shipping. Well, if you're now, let customer. me see what happens if I go to Amazon and what do I need anyway? Uh, coffee. Uh, let's see. Pete's. No, no, no. This is a little button at the bottom uh, of the Woot thing mm -hmm. uh, that is permanent. You know, you can move the website around, but it's on a green bar. And it says log in with Amazon. No, log in with. Oh, Amazon. I see. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like if you have Amazon Prime or something like that. Right, right. But it might make it easier to log in. No, I'm a Prime member. That's what it says. But anyway, right. hold on a second. Let me just make sure my credit card works here. Uh, this is. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, Amazon. Let me go to Pete's. Because uh, I need to buy order. the cake. You buy the Pete's K cups? No, no. I buy the uh, the 
regular stuff. Let's see, that's Big Bang. I don't want that. Major Dickinson's, no, that's not what I want. Where is it? Is I like it? the French uh, roast on Pete's. No, I use this other one, but where is it? It doesn't... Hmm. Well, let me go to my orders here. This is very interesting radio, isn't it, folks? This is sort of yeah. incredible. Podcasting. Let me see here. Podcasting. Oh, Heart and Hershey's chocolate. <coughs> no, I don't want that. Pete's. Here we go. The Alma de Tierra. There we go. Buy it again. Buy now with one click. So you just don't go to Death Wish anymore, huh? Yeah. Let me see here. Death Wish coffee. Yeah, no, that uh, that went through. Huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. View and or edit your order. There we go. And uh, what what credit card did I use? I used the Visa. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're okay. So I, I think I did it all right. Um, get mail. Uh, we'll check and see if everything went through okay in a moment. But anyway. Can you check your American Express online and see if the charge went through? Well, I'm sure it did. Oh, okay. Because, but why it didn't accept my visa, I have no idea. Uh, maybe I, maybe I, maybe I had to give them that extra number, and it didn't I didn't see it there or whatever. Anyway, um, get mail. Come on, where's where's a where's it say that I my my thing went through on Amazon? So, uh, uh, Rob, those drives you bought are you know I I bought. Red drives. There are mm -hmm. different ones. There's blacks. There's reds. Uh, f uh, you know, for um, a different amount of uh, use. Yeah, I guess. I bought. Uh, I bought them. I bought mine on New Egg. That's and, a good place. Yeah, they were the best price that I could find. I paid three fifty, three sixty for three of them. That's good. Really? Yeah, one hundred and twenty a drive. Yeah. And that's fours. Uh, yeah, my five drives are eights. But uh, eventually, uh, once I start filling up this uh, thing a little bit, which I haven't, uh, I'll get a second Drobo and uh, turn this one into the backup and uh, the newer Drobo uh, with faster mm -hmm. drives. You know, I bought the Seacate Constellation 7200 RPM, 128 cash, 128 meg cash. Uh, six gig drives, the six gig six. cache. No, 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 six oh. gig uh, back end. That's the throughput of the drive. That's not the, uh, it's the oh, four terabyte the speed. drives. Yeah. No, that's the throughput. The speed is 7,200 RPM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The five drives I've got are 54s. Yeah. But, uh, you know, eventually they, they're, they're selling uh, portable uh, USB 3 uh, and Thunderbolt, I think, uh, drives that are four terabyte and SSD, and they're in the two hundred and something range. Uh, so you know you can get these portable drives now as an yeah, SSD. I'm, yeah, I, I'm a little fearful of them yet for long term storage. You really? Because can you can you arrange them? Well, because they have they have a limited life. Right, there's only so many write. You're not buying the enterprise ones; they're extremely expensive, so they have yeah. limited write capacity. An SSD, then they wear out. Yes. Uh, so it's uh, it's not like the SSD hard drives that are in your. Uh, oh, Mac the, or the, you know, they have limited re write capacity as well. Oh, but yeah. if you're looking to store something, see, in a la in a laptop, you know, how long you have a laptop for? You, assuming that you've got archivable data. To me, that's going to be there for longer than your laptop is. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more concerned about rights to the, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I know that there's limited write capacity and they, they wear out. Yeah. So, and that's all, you could Google that, you know, they, there's limited rights on them. So how do, and you, I just, how, do you, how do you do away with an order? What, what do you mean? mean? I'm trying to. St I, I just placed another order just to see what happened, and I can't. Uh, I can't uh, sign out of it. Uh, I'll go to your. Uh, uh, there's a box at the top, a shopping cart. Maybe you can go in there yeah, and I turn would... the order into zero. No, and, you can't uh, turn the order uh, into zero. You mean you mean you got something in your cart? Yeah. And you want to clear your cart? Yeah. 
you should be able to change the uh, go to the cart and change the either hit delete or change the the quantity to zero. No, there's no. That's quantity. what I just said. They, that's not. They don't have that ability for a quantity of zero. Well, let me see. I want one. So I just oh, put remove, that remove. In my I found cart. it. I found it. I found it. Yeah, it's got to be there. Yeah. I just went to the cart and it's blank. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, no, I, something came up here. Shopping cart, zero items. Yeah, <clears throat> I removed it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, they got they got the first generation M, uh, Amazon Echo for seventy five bucks right now. Yeah, yeah. But I don't I don't need that. It's I, the it's the Echo Show the um the the with the video screen. Yeah, the smaller one. Uh, first generation. Yeah, I don't, that's I, a smaller uh, one. I was thinking of getting the new bigger one and putting it in the office here because I can call Skype with it. You can. Yeah, I can use Skype with it. Uh, I do it all maybe, the time from the kitchen. Maybe that's what your friend Bubbles needs. Remember, I think I talked to you to... one day from the kitchen, right, Phil? Yeah. By Skype. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Right. So. Uh, well, uh, since this show has gone so tech, I'm not going to ask you how you turn off a uh, the Hero 4. I can't I remember how to turn it off. I turned it on, but I can't turn it off. <laughs> I think you uh, t take the uh, the button on the front, yeah, and just yeah. hold it down. Just the mode hold button. Yeah, hold it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now the nothing. Oh, it, it turned off. Yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody right. else have any technical things Another you'd solution. like to ask me? Uh, yeah. Call Gabnet for <clears throat> technical uh, questions and answers. Yeah. yeah. Listen, nine ninety five. I need a new catheter for my arrhythmia. You, can you guys work on that? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, now, sure why they... would you? Uh, now, I always thought catheters was something you stuck up your, uh, uh, you know, they, uh, what? How do you use it in your uh, in your heart? Oh, to get into your heart, usually make a small incision down. Oh, the, like they oh. did with me. Uh, when they did the uh, angioplasties, sure. a catheter sure. is only a, an entry. A yeah, so it could be anywhere. Just a, oh, okay. Just a, usually, it's a pretty uh, flexible. Uh, yeah, food. you don't do it though, do you? You don't do no. that to yourself. Oh, I was going to no. say, no. you catheterize your heart. No. Wow. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm I'm trying to get. I have this arrhythmia thing, and it it, it changes. So you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm like trying to w go upstairs, and I don't have enough energy to get upstairs. I can go oh, down. Well. No. And uh, I'm trying to. We're not talking sex here, are we? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway. Well, you certainly put us off on that. Now I'm all worried about my credit card because nothing's, <laughs> nothing's come through on Amazon yet. But uh, they, yeah. you know. Uh, it might not come through There on was Amazon. no option just, on, uh, uh, what's interesting, on Woot, there was no option for um, um, eBay. Uh, not eBay, but uh, what do you call it? PayPal. Uh, that's a good, let's see. Yeah. I don't think I've ever used PayPal there. I always use it. I always, so I had a, I had a kind of account because way I've had a, a Woot account for years. Mm -hmm. And then recently when they started using Amazon, I've just switched. Um, and so I always use my Amazon, um, nice. never used PayPal. Yeah. It's hard to believe that they would though. Yeah. Most major websites have it. Uh, uh, there's no connection to eBay because this is owned Not you said, eBay. by Amazon. We didn't say eBay. We said pa PayPal. I know, but uh, is PayPal uh, got something to do with eBay? No, it, it used, more. It used, it used to. to. Oh, okay. It used uh, to. Yeah, and I thought you said that this Woot was owned by Amazon, so I assumed that you know one wouldn't support the other. Yeah, but, probably not. That's true. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. yeah, but PayPal, you know, a lot of these companies take pay. I think even Amazon takes PayPal. Really? Yeah, they do. I don't think so. Huh? I, I haven't have never, had any I've, success. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think so. They don't like each other. Yes. 
because you know Bezos wants to own their ass. If he can't own their ass, then he wants nothing to do with them. And Bezos can go blow his brains out in the closet for all I care. Why? Because he's a fucking monopolistic cocksucker. That's why. No, he's Preaches not. employees like shit. No. The only reason why he's able to pay his uh, but, but, lowest rung employees fifteen dollars no, no, an but, hour it, is because of pressures from people like Bernie Sanders. You know, you, you, like you trouble, the trouble with you, the trouble with you, and, Brian. Uh, his, uh, it, 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 Brian, is you have these attitudes about things. And and they're um, uh, many times unreasonable. How is that? Are you stunned? Are you stunned? Are you stunned? Well, they're unreasonable because to begin with, you know, it isn't that Amazon involves himself in monopolistic practices. They happen to be a company that's very, very popular, but they don't do practices which attempt to put other people out of business. I I think they. Do just Don't put other uh, out of business. by their existence. Well, no, but here's the thing: how you know if you're a company and you become very successful, by virtue of that, you are going to have a large share of the market. Now, the question becomes: in the case of, for instance, antitrust against Microsoft, the antitrust was them not allowing other browsers onto their system. Right. Uh, you remember uh, that? No, their their antitrust was that their browser came with the hardware. Yes, but but you but, could put other browsers. Yeah, on Yeah, you the could system. put other browsers on, but you had to go get them. They didn't suggest them. Or by gaining uh, a pub competitive advantage over other competitors via tax breaks and other uh, and other no, that's, uh, that, public that's resources a, that, that they parasitically uh, hey, take hey, advantage of. If you're but running, you would be against every big company if you if you take that attitude about everything. I do take that attitude, and for the record, to an, to a great extent, I am. I think it's I think it's abysmal. I call I call what you call what they call a um, com, what they call a form of competitive practice. I call economic discrimination. Do you have to do business with Amazon? I'm sorry. Do you have to do business with Amazon? In this capacity, where I'm at now, no, I do not. But do you do business with Amazon? I have in the past, like years ago. Uh, but you don't anymore. Not. Well, then, do you? They're not a monopoly. It's a convenience. But you have to you have to shop. You can't get away from these huge conglomerates. You know, I I pick and ch I'm like you in a in a respect that. Like I refuse to shop at Walmart because to me That's exactly Walmart, what Amazon is. Walmart on sale. No, 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 no. You're right to some degree, but Walmart is way worse because Walmart goes into a town and puts other people and, out of business and puts and and lowers all their prices, puts everybody out of business, and then they decide they want to pull out and they leave this big box there. Go to I just Google I hate Walmart and and go enjoy what you see there. Because you will, just based on your personality, you will enjoy what you read, the, the horror stories about Walmart. Well, Alex, I'm, I'm, I, I sent you a Walmart. book. Don't get me wrong. I, I sent you a book called The Big Box Swindle. Yeah. And, and my company is mentioned in it, but, uh, and that's why I had a couple of copies. But the, uh, the, the, it's very interesting. It's exactly what uh, Rob is talking about right now is that these uh, big boxes move in. They build a building outside of town mm -hmm. that usually has about a 15-year life. And then uh, they put the retailers out of business that were downtown. Yeah. Uh, then eventually these retailers migrate out to where these big boxes are. Mm -hmm. And then within about 15 years, the big box shuts that store down, shutters it, and then moves back to the downtown area, which is blighted, and opens up there. So and let me ask this follow-up question, Phil. How is Amazon not doing the same thing, only worse, in that they don't even have as much of a physical presence? Well, still uh, they're off of I tell you, they're offering, online. Brian, they're offering their platform to other uh, uh, merchants. So, for instance, you Walmart can offers in, their platform to, uh, like, I understand. You asked me, smaller you know, manufacturers. How, you know how how are they how are they doing it? And it's just that if you're a merchant and you have something to sell, you can sell that through Amazon, and uh, uh, you know and and it, and it gives you another platform to do business. Now I don't do that only because I'm too lazy, but uh, well, there's also there's I also the, there's also the good things that Amazon does, and one of them is is they bought Whole Foods and lowered prices, so everybody yeah. can shop there, not just the wealthy. 
Yeah, but their uh, their containers, I've just found out, are giving people cancer. Uh, did you hear that the uh, paper containers that uh, they're using at Whole Foods uh, for uh, for the uh, food bar uh, has uh, cancer causing? Uh, wait, wait a minute. How, how does paper it? have cancer causing properties it's in it? What it's li- It's what it's lined with. What's uh, your source for that, Phil? Uh, not that I doubt. Not that I doubt. Was, it was like NBC or CBA. It was one of those news feeds that I get on the uh, on the phone. Whole yeah, but Foods. you can't. You, you, you know that was probably okay. developed by Whole Foods before Amazon purchased it. It's not. No, I, I understand. Who's... I'm just throwing that one out there. You know, hey, they know now, and it's just a recent discovery that yeah. uh, that these food containers for their food bar, their hot food bar. Yeah, I've eaten from them a couple of times. My understanding is Walmart allows allows merchants, smaller independent or smaller merchants, uh, to here, here uh, put their products on Walmart shelves. They 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 oh, gouge the uh, shelves. Wait they, a minute, here it is, folks. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I was right. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> Whole Foods hailed for high standards for healthy food, ranked worst in a study of five major U.S. grocery chains for chemicals it uses in packaging at its popular hot food bar. In response, the company says it's removed all the coated paper products in question and has started a search for new biodegradable packaging. So they responded to it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Nobody gets to take a drink. <laughs> Nobody gets to take a drink. You were right. You were right. I, I but just read something on the Internet. But it's being corrected. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't um, say it wasn't. Yeah. But all I'm saying about Amazon is, is that, 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 that Amazon... Uh, became a huge company, not based on them putting, trying to put other people out of business to get out of the way of them, right. uh, which is, is the case with Microsoft, which is the case with Walmart, which is uh, uh, Walmart, uh, which is the case with a lot of these companies that are anti-competitive. Is Amazon too big? Probably. You know, and it's also but, it's also the case with Tony's Comics. Yeah. He's got the market cornered on valuable Corner. comics. Right. Yeah. No, but, 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 you know, what I'm saying is, is that, that uh, what happens is sometimes these companies become too big before they know it. You know, and uh, uh, yes, it's, it's the government's job to take them to task and to try and say, hey, you're too big, you're anti-competitive, you're doing this, you're doing that. But nobody's come up against Amazon saying they're anti-competitive. They Except just, maybe Sears, because they just shuttered another hundred stores. Well, they? what they did yeah. it, it, here's what they it, all they did by their by their popularity was kill them all. That's really what they killed. You know, but the internet I mean, was doing. The that only thing anyway. they can't do that a mall can do is sell yogurt. No, you, you know? can't. Right, you can't and have stop, air conditioning. You, yeah. you can't. Right, you can't <laughs> stop progress and change. You, you know, if it wasn't Amazon, it would be another company that would be selling all of this stuff over the Internet. And mm-hmm. quite frankly, I think as far as when you compare like a Walmart to Amazon, I think Walmart loses every day of the and week, you know, including they, Sunday. They, they fucked up my favorite store, which is Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Nobles are closing down all over the place. Even the one in Walnut Creek closed. And uh, but you see, uh, Barnes and Noble, um, um, unfortunately, that's something that's something that's gone the way yeah. of the dodo. I mean, it, I, would, I it would it would wait a minute, it would have died anyway. Yes. It's ju- it, because digital b- publishing has become the order of the day and they don't sell digital publishing at the stores well, at Barnes and Noble. But Barnes and Noble dot com exists. Yeah, but they had these little uh, readers that they would sell. Uh, yeah, I well, what they well, $10 and, or something. And, and they Electric still sell state. them. Yeah. They still sell them. But the but fact I, is I, that, no, the fact is the bookstore is going the way of the dodo because of but, technology. And it, it's not because of Amazon. Amazon's yeah. one of the reasons why, but it's just that you get hey, your books digitally now. I can drink a nutritious meal that's uh, that's made in a packet or by the I way those steak. those books I would you much, don't see I'd much rather find me, read a book and paper. Yeah, find me a find me a record yeah, like hold on a second find me a record store 
Right. They, right. they exactly. were in Barnes and Noble. Well, the pe- <laughs> fact is you don't have record stores anymore. You don't have bookstores anymore. They had but, CDs. But Amazon isn't the only one that sells records and books. iTunes sells records and books. Okay, a lot of other companies sell records and books, although they're not as popular as Amazon and Apple, but nevertheless, they do. Yes, Brian. I'm just thinking. I hear I hear Phil here talking. And this is to Phil more than anyone else. You know, you miss the experience of hanging out at a Barnes and Noble, though, being that they're private industry and they're probably they've been outcompeted with these new mediums of entertainment. So, uh, why not consider? Increasing the funding to our country's, uh, to our nation's public libraries, and because they, they because have, the, have like uh, because I, the public library I have has a little coffee shop inside of it. Yeah, it's that's something right new. Now. That's yeah. something yeah. new. Why not um, do that instead? Have a because it's important. Yeah. Uh, human uh, Jeff, a Jeff wants to Jeff, to, Jeff wants to yeah. say something. My my oldest uh, son is an architect, mm-hmm. and he just redid a. Uh, a book place, just exactly what you're talking about. It was, the, it was part of a local town, mm-hmm. and they decided to expand it. Which really? Is, you know, you would think like, wow. Libraries have to reinvent themselves. Yeah, so they redesigned the thing. I, I, one of my customers, I you know, I, I deal mostly with public sector customers, state, local government, education, libraries and such. And I was in a library recently talking to a customer and they were giving us the plans for what they're doing to their library. The amount of books in a library is going to shrink. He said, we're going to have like one area with books and everything else is going to be all different kinds of media. And all. I mean, it's it's really libraries are that you still rent, but you can't own. I mean, you, you can rent like digital publications from my library. You just can't own it. Well, I want to bring it, back encrypted and whatnot that you borrow that bring... digital copy of, say, Stormy Daniels' book, but you can't I wanna, on, e- I wanna, on, on e-book. I want to bring back the Dewey Decimal System. It's not no. gone. I, it I made gone. a joke. I made a joke about I that. Books and I said, remember the Dewey Decimal System? Because we still use it. It's just really? not as prevalent. Yeah, they still use yeah. it. Yeah, I, I got in grade school. They used to teach you how to use the right. decimal system. Right. Absolutely. Remember the ca- the card catalog. Oh, oh right, exactly. Card catalog. No more well, card Rob's catalog. Talking about kind of goes hand in hand with the expansion of broadband <laughs> services and a national internet that's accessible to everyone, whether it's in New York City or in some obscure rural community in Kansas. Yeah, but like uh, you know, I was saying earlier, record stores don't exist anymore, except maybe nostalgia record stores. You know, maybe, are, yeah, maybe. No. Uh, I haven't seen one. Uh, you know, there used to be the one that Sam Goody. There used to be a great one on Long Island, and they used to advertise all over New York radio, Whirling Disc Records in Farmingdale. Yeah, popular place. Uh, the, the, you know, I used to know those guys because I worked in radio, and yeah. they used to advertise on our station. Uh, the the husband died. The <laughs> wife closed the store on Main Street in Farmingdale, and she now, if you go to Whirl and Disc Records online, she runs it out of her house. But she had collectible forty. You could get any forty five, uh, all collectible music, and then of course the hits of the day. But it was a great record store. Just uh, unfortunately. Couldn't afford the rent in downtown, uh, you know, Farmingdale anymore. When I lived in New York, there was Sam Goody. But yeah. when I moved to California, San Francisco, there was Tower Records. Which yeah, was, we had uh, Tower City, too. Which, which, was, Tower which was fun, you know. It was, uh, Tower they, chain. Yeah. We have half price But, the, but the, main one, the main one was down in the Fisherman's Wharf area. Oh, that really? The main one was there? Yeah. Wasn't it? Was that the main one, Alex? I don't think so. I thought I saw Wharf. Thing. What was this? Uh, the, the tower, tower yeah, big tower at Fisherman's Wharf. Down was that, was the, that main? the main one? No, no, the main no, one. Do you so, know what? No. no, you know what the 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 main Tower Records was? I was trying to think. No, yeah, Los Angeles. I nope, thought. nope. I, I watched a documentary nope. on that, but I can't. Yeah, remember. Sac- too. Sacramento, California. It was oh, really? a it was a record store that was built right next door to the Tower Theater. And it was called Tower Mu- Tower Records, and that's where it started. And then they started, uh, it was so popular that they started uh, uh, putting it all around. You know, Netflix stadium. has a great special oh. on t- on Tower Records. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I, I saw that, yeah. yeah. But it started in Sacramento, California. Yeah. I knew it was West Coast. Yeah, uh, 
so, yeah, so I, I just assumed that the one in uh, North Beach, because it was big and it was famous and a lot of people used... I, I just saw a thing on uh, John Means' uh, Facebook where he had a record at Tower Records, which was featured on the, uh, on the wall outside, and then there was another group... Uh, I forget what he called uh, uh, that was in front of in front of it, getting their picture taken, and you know some it was. Uh, yeah, you had to buy to get your picture on that wall. You had to what? You had to buy the space. Really? Yeah. yeah. I guess the company that uh, yeah. John did yeah. the album for bought the space. But they, that's how they made their money. That's how Tower made a little extra money. Was they sold the space and they had all the record album covers painted on the front of their store. Very cool. And so you thought it was just a way of them saying, hey, come on in. We got this album. No, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no. promoing it. Also, I'll, I'll throw, uh, put another arrow in your balloon. The Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah. yeah. You pay for those. I was yep. just going to say, so it's yep. like the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah, yeah. you pay for those. You, pay for your you don't get, they don't say, hey, we, uh, they, they, they say we'd like to put you on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And you go, oh, that's wonderful. And they go, it'll oh, cost no. you like $35,000 or whatever it costs to put in the star. Oh, you know, so you pay oh. for it. Wow. Yeah. So they like busted Trump up. So Trump pissed off, you had to pay for so many of them. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, huh? I can imagine you pay for one, and uh, if they bust it up, aren't they insured to replace it? Well, nobody really wants to bust up Humphrey Bogart's star. Okay. Yeah, nobody's gonna hear that. Much. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Give him time. The me too. Uh, me too. People will be after him. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Mike Bowen's gonna have a star in the walk. Oh, by the way, I got a story here for you. This one's interesting. This is interesting. <laughs> Uh, mm. You know, I still haven't found out. What, it still hasn't said you bought a thing at 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 uh, uh, at, uh, uh, at Root. No, no, not at Root. At uh, no, I didn't I'm get just... one anything from them either. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I didn't get anything from. That's either. why I said go in and check your credit card. Uh, no, 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 my credit card, my Amex went through, Phil. How do you know it went? Through? Because they said it went through. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Maybe. It's the other one that they couldn't get to go through. And it's probably something in their situation because my card is fine, you know. Yeah. Um, what, was, what was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, but no, so they, they haven't even. Uh, Walk of Fame. Uh, my my uh, Amazon purchase hasn't uh, been mentioned there. Anyway, where are we? Okay. So, uh, my glasses just broke. Damn it. All the hell. readers. Huh? Readers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Ask me. Ah, here's the other one. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I'll use this one, and I'll glue that one together tomorrow. Anyway. Just put tape on it. Yeah, right. Get a pocket protector. Right. Get a pocket <laughs> protector. <laughs> now, now, now I have to clean my glasses because these glasses don't exactly work. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, here we go. Amazon, I got these five of them huh? for 12 bucks. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, the Should federal see those Amazon. thin ones? Here, here's <laughs> one for you. Uh, these are just like five, five different... You know, they got even got one one set is dark. Mm. There are these one ultra thin ones that you can put in your can wallet. Can I mention yeah. this story? What's that? Go ahead. <laughs> oh boy, this show is organized tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it started out you strong. Were for tape. The Federal Communications has had a long-standing ban on mergers among the big four broadcast television networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. However, Reuters reports that the agency voted today to open a new review of U.S. media ownership rules and take comments on whether the government should end its prohibition on the mergers. Oh, boy. The report notes the FCC asking whether the rule remains necessary to promote competition, localism, or viewpoint diversity. FCC uh, Chairman Ajit Pai, asshole, yeah. motherfucker, cocksucker, Sandy said... Sandy Dick Care Pie, the toilet skin twat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> said the, it said the commission is teeing up on a number of questions and keeping an open mind on whether the rules still make sense. 
Uh, the FCC noted that a version of the rule barring dual ownership of the networks has existed since the 1940s and asked if the U.S. antitrust laws or other policies would serve as a sufficient backstop to prevent undue consolidation between or among the big four networks. Well, I mean, if that's the case, well, why not just leave your ro- rule in place? Why do you have to remove it? Well, if you, if you work because so they well, want to. It worked so well in the radio industry. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, yeah, it really worked well. Yeah, deregulating the <laughs> an radio. Obama industry. appointee, by the way. Who? Sandy did care by the toilet. Uh, you're watching. absolutely wrong. Obama uh, didn't appoint no, him to the FCC. He was appo- it was appointed by Trump. Hey, uh, there's uh, something else going on with the Internet. In California, they want to tax... Uh, and believe uh, me, Brian, I know text. what I'm talking about. What? They, they, uh, yeah, text messages. They want to ta- tax what? text messages. Yeah. And yeah. they said that the uh, millions that they would raise from it would pay for phones for the poor. I will allow any congressman or senator to vote yes on that proposal if they can say uh, text tax 10 times fast. Yeah. Well, they're saying that a text message is basically an email and you can't tax emails. So, uh, but, but that's what they want to do in How California. How are you going to text, text a ta- oh, tax? A tax. Because they'll have a, they'll have I can't a, even a, say it <laughs> once, okay? They'll have a monthly fee uh, yeah. that's at the bottom of the bill. So, uh, you know, maybe it'll be 80 cents or something that will... Uh, It'll be on the bill. Yeah, but I'm poor and I can't afford the tax. Well, I guess you can't text either. And that means that means all the crap texts you get, especially now you're starting to see, at least I am, yeah. spam texts. I have uh, they're, they're also spam talking text, about yeah. that, uh, making spam texts uh, illegal. That, well, that I'd go for. Make all uh, spam. Hey, I got robo killer now. I'm, I'm a happy guy. Yeah. Uh, you know. But I'm using their uh, their standard. Uh, this call has been answered by Robo Killer, and uh, it's spam. Uh, you know, whatever the default message is. Which, which one are you using? I don't now? use. I don't use any of them particularly. I just let them choose. It doesn't matter. Oh, so it's a random one. Yeah. Uh, okay. I I don't know if it's working or not. I know I'm I'm getting a lot less Robo calls. I'm not but, getting any. But it doesn't come up that they block them either. So I don't oh. I I don't know whether they're doing it or it just as a matter of form it does it you know. Uh, if you go to oh. their app, uh, you can see here your Amazon uh, the, for Pete's coffee went through. Oh, right. oh but you, 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 you can see here on Robo uh, Killer uh, all the calls that it blocks, <laughs> and it not only blocks them, it records them, so you can hear if yeah, I know, it wasn't I know, the, I know, yeah. I have it. I have it. Yeah, I, yeah, I turned well, I you it on to you it. Told me about yeah, it. Yeah, uh, it it it's okay. But anyway, uh, uh, getting back to these mergers. Yes, do, uh, Brian. Yeah, he was appointed as chairman of the SEC by Donald Trump. I'll give you that. But he was appointed by Barack Obama at the recommendation of Mitch McConnell in May of 2012. But that was that, in the that, FCC. that was to serve on the FCC as the chairman of the FCC. He was appointed by Trump. Right. But to serve, but to well, serve in the SEC, he was an, an yes. Obama but that appointee. is that is not a point of power because at that point, at that time, Obama wanted to put a Republican on there because it was filled with Democrats, and he felt that there, while the Democrats would prevail, that there should be uh, someone from the other side in there to keep the Republicans happy. Well, Clinton had the same kind of managerial style, chaotic managerial style. They say so. Oh, oh, How did he have chaotic managerial style? You come up with these. You're as bad as Phil when it comes up to this kind of stuff. It was on a History Channel documentary what? on the 40th, uh, 40th, what is it? Which 40, 42nd president of the United States. That that was that was what uh, they considered it, his managerial style would be because he had people from various uh, oh, oh. backgrounds and ideologies. Oh, I thought you said something uh, other than that. You you were you were saying that, but no, his he he believed he definitely ears, did. Alex. Huh? Ears, Alex. Use them. Oh fuck you! <laughs> Eat shit. Yeah. Nah, he's just ready to jump the gay guy. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm ready to he's jump the gay ready. guy. Um, <laughs> uh, Maybe younger than Tony, Alex, but I'm not like him. I'm not some jelly spine. 
Oh, oh don't, don't oh, go. Oh, now don't, no, don't go after members of the citizen panel. That's what I'm here for. That's what he, yeah, that's what he's there for. <laughs> I got my mother with that. <laughs> No, anyway, down on him like a barrel of bricks. Anyway, I just, I just, uh, uh, am, am uh, uh, this whole idea of, uh, of you know, doing a banning this, uh, doing away with the ban is ridiculous because I mean, I would agree to people who want to say that there are more powerful things in play now than broadcast television like Netflix, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, I, I just think that we should keep that in play. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't impinge on these companies. It doesn't put them in a, a negative position to compete with everybody else by not being able to buy up another company. See, I, I personally believe that you can take, you can find if they want to do this mm -hmm. because they want to, you know, they want to, they want to throw a bone to the the media conglomerates mm -hmm. that you can find the statistics that will say that not allowing the merging of these companies is hurting them and not allowing them to compete so well with the Netflixes of the world. And I, I will bet you dollars to donuts five years from now, you'll see that happen. Well, yeah, but the, to compete against Netflix isn't a matter of, uh, of having more power. It isn't like Netflix went out and consolidated with a whole bunch of other organizations. In fact, there hasn't even been a hint of Netflix trying to buy up another company. You know, with all the billions of dollars they have at their disposal, they're just investing it in programming. Yeah, they yeah. are. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, when you were talking uh, to the Bubbles thing tonight, uh -huh. uh, you mentioned Play TV. And uh, you mentioned, you know, buying that building and so forth. When you were doing Play TV... Uh, do you have any idea what the size of your audience was? Oh, it was negligible. And, negligible. Mm -hmm. Negligible. Uh, was it was it live or pre-recorded? It's live. So, uh, so it was not a save thing like you can save a podcast. Right. This was this was 1999. Yeah. Uh, this was uh, doing live programming on the internet. Which very few people had the, you know, they still had dial up. They still had right. dial up in those days. Yeah, you know? 300 uh, bots. Uh, we put out, you know, we put out a 300 kbps signal so that it was a high, high quality signal. But we also put that out a very slow one so it would work on, uh, on dial up. But, it, you know, it was very small picture. Uh, so once, once it was broadcast, it was done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so, and uh, how did they generate income uh, that uh, would have supported, you know, we didn't gen we NBC didn't generate building. income. We were using a piece of equipment that was their prime product called the uh, uh, the Trinity toaster. Uh, oh. the tr Trinity, no, the toaster was a, a precursor to that, uh, and uh, the Trinity. Uh, you know, we were we they were using this as an example of what you could do with the Trinity. So and they got a lot of they got a lot of publicity out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was okay. Uh, no, when when you were talking, uh, you know, about you said play, and I just it made me think of uh, that thing you were talking about, and I was just wondering, you know, mm -hmm. I, I had never heard of it before uh, in 1999, and I had a com I've had a computer since uh, the early 80s. Uh, yeah, you know, but it, it you know it was it was out there, but it was it, it we 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 didn't we we were putting out a stronger signal than most people could pick up. Okay, I, I think maybe you could get this signal if you had. Uh, I think the best thing you could get then was DSL. You know, uh, if you had a DSL, you could you know you could you you could pretty much pick up the, you could get the bandwidth, catch the bandwidth. But that's you know that that. You know, it was all uh, a matter of doing stuff really early. You know, it's my old it's my old uh, theory in life that you should never be. Uh, and I used to always like trying to be the first in everything. Right. But it never got me anywhere because you don't want to yeah. be the first in anything. You want to be the yeah. second in something. That's right. That's exactly right. Or you want to own the patent. <laughs> no, no, but you you uh, there's no there's no patent on what we were doing. You know, yeah. the method of communication was using the Internet. There was no patent to that. But you don't want to be the first person because you want to be the person who imitates the first person because he's going to be the one that's going to be successful at it. It's like, uh, 
uh, like the Chinese stealing our intellectual property. Well, you know, I mean, we we hear about uh, online services, but you know, AOL was only popular for a short amount of time. Somebody else came up with a better idea, you know, and and so it, it, you don't necessarily want to be the first. In fact, the first wasn't even AOL. There was. What was it? CompuServe. It was, oh, it was yeah. CompuServe, yeah, but there was something. And at, Prodigy. Prodigy, that's, that's the one right. I was trying to think there, of. There was a time when there wasn't any of those people, and you had to type in some long address uh, in, oh. in order to uh, contact or there were send billboards. an email. They were billboards. Remember the oh, billboards? Oh, the billboard the services. local billboards? Yeah. 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 I miss the uh, chat rooms, honestly. The instant messengers and all that bullshit. I miss those days. Well, you, but you have those today. I mean, your 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 Facebook Messenger is pretty much the same thing. Yeah, but you can't go. Yeah, it, but it doesn't seem you can go out and Brian, find new people. Is no, they're they're all monitored uh, by uh, to catch a predator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Jimmy Junior, John Schlong, and Cuntalina Tina can't keep it. Uh, can't keep it, have parents that can't monitor their activities properly. Yeah, everybody on there's a cop. Report. I never knew kids by that name, uh, or anybody that named their kids that name. Uh, oh, they should. <laughs> That's yeah, they should. That's a descriptive term because it's exactly what the fuck they are. I see. So. Okay. God, you're bitter. Uh, Holidays too. Uh, what, what what was the if term? You laugh, what you was agree. the term? Bud had it. Bitter. A tad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got chocolate. You agree to some extent or another. You agree with me. What did you say, Tony? Somebody got chocolate in the stocking. Yeah. <laughs> I got that once, and I was like, I was pissed. What? I said, oh, you got coal in your stocking once? I, she, she put coal in the stocking. Was your mother? Said, your mother yeah, put co you, coal in your stocking? One year. I think that was kind of mean. My sister, was it a joke or did she come out with the real well, stuff I, after? She said, Santa heard you say a bad word. I wouldn't walk her to the bathroom. Oh, Just for that, I wouldn't walk her for budget. I wouldn't walk her to the bathroom anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I telling you, just push her down the stairs. I just yeah. got my guitar that day. Fuck you, Mom. Remember when you left coal in my stocking? <laughs> well, yeah. That was me. Dude, it was yeah, clean you coal. You find the toilet <laughs> yourself. <laughs> It was, I put, some, I put some Clorox bleach in her saline solution. Hell, if Marjorie put coal in my stocking, she'd be wearing two braces right now. <laughs> oh, <stop. You> know? <laughs> ah, it's full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just tell you to stay warm. Train. Huh? What are you saying, stay Kevin? Stay warm. Yeah. Kevin, what did yeah, you say? Sounds like that movie, Throw Mama from the Train. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put you in draft again. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. I love it. Uh, a few things were happening today in the news. By the way, uh, 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 Phil, it's not looking good for your boy. Yeah, it's not really looking not. good. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll wait until there's due process. Well, yeah, that was great. I'll wait till. <laughs> you know, it wasn't looking good for Weinstein either, but it looks like he's going to get off. Well, no, it doesn't look like he's going to get off, but there's some. He may get off with good behavior. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that well, would be weird. Trump, Wouldn't that be weird? They wind up with four more years of a Republican. It may not be Trump, but it might be Pence or it might be someone else. Yeah. Well, the point Pence. the point is that uh, that now this uh, guy Pecker, I and if, Every time I I, ne I can't forget his name. Not I can right. forget a lot of names, but Pecker's name I can't forget. Comedy exactly. could not have come up yeah. with a better name for this guy at the National Enquirer. Just like Anthony Weiner. He must have had a yeah. fight when he was a kid. I wonder if Pecker ever met Weiner. Yeah. <laughs> Weiner, Pecker. I'm sure he or did. If they ever had brunch with Boner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all New Yorkers. Yeah, this, you know, there's some. No, they were like out to get Boner. Yeah. <laughs> well, boners for uh, marijuana legalization. Amazing. Yeah. Did you see that? I've been hearing the ads. Yeah, but I that. heard something about he Boehner bought, that he I'm, I'm yeah he brought into him. marijuana. Yeah, he, he's out uh, doing lectures. Yeah, yeah on, he's, uh, he's, investment lectures. He's selling the hemp. Anyway, uh, today, uh, today, uh, today, today, Pecker words. and the National Enquirer said that Trump was in the room with Jared. Yeah. Was it? Uh, at the time yeah. that they were discussing the payments to this uh, Playboy Playmate. Mm. Uh, like that he was actually in the room. In the boner with Pecker. Hey, uh, you know, they're also <laughs> talking <laughs> about Jared being his chief, chief, chief of staff today. Yeah. Uh, How do you yeah. like that one? 
He's the only. He, nobody else will do it. He's already yeah. fucked. He's I already he's fucked fine. his son-in-law because he knows he's in the middle of this whole thing. Every look, we only know just some breadcrumbs about what Mueller has on everybody. And the closer you get to Trump, the more it stinks. It's not over till it's over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, you guys, you guys yeah. smell blood in the water, and and you're and you're circling the, uh, you know, you're circling the dead fish. Can you can oh, you hear me? Right. Listen to me carefully, Phil. Damn fucking straight. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you smell <laughs> blood, but it's Trump. your own. <laughs> you know. Uh, I, you know. Would you bet on that, really? Would you, would would you, you make a bet? bet? Would you make that? a bet right yeah. now, Phil? Hard... I don't see him resigning. And well, I don't no, I didn't him say him that. Him we himself. didn't say that. Yeah, I don't, I don't want him to that. resign. Well, a lot of people are saying that's the only way he'll get out of it. No, he won't get out of it then. That would be quicker that they could prosecute him. They can right now charge him with something him, if he leaves office. He Why better he? He, he better well, win the next. charge him, but he can get pardoned. Listen, I think he's very lucky. OK, that he became president of the United States, because had he not become president of the United States, he might be in jail right now. Yeah, I disagree. Yep. I think I think he would have all of this stuff wouldn't have happened. Right. Everybody loved Donald Trump. He was uh, a media whore. He it was a reality TV star. He lived a great life. He what had Mar a lot. What on. the fuck did he need all this bullshit for? That's what he said. <laughs> and, you know, he said, hey, it's cost him a lot of money. Uh, I'm sure it has. President. I'm sure it has, but he I'm brought it on himself. Agree. Well, since everybody else has ever been president came out of it richer for the for the experience, I think he can too. Yes, Jeff. Uh you're muted, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Um I'm sorry. Uh the president should really tell everybody that he really wants to spend more time with his kids. <laughs> <laughs> he already is. <laughs> yes. He returned Donnie Jr.'s gift back to him, so that tells you, that speaks volumes of his character. He'll throw his children under the bus. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. What do you give him, a building in Russia? No, uh, uh, Don Jr. said that he gave him, like, some kind of tie or something in one year. Christmas gift, and then the following year or the following two years, he got the same gift back returned to him by his dad. That's oh, because he he knocked, he's a re-gifter. No, he knocked uh, it off in China, and he just gave him one of the uh, one of the new Trump long ties. You know. That, that's plus, I've, I've I've been of the school of thought that uh, Trump would throw his children under the bus to to, to save his own. Uh, see now, see now, as much as much as I have a low a low uh, opinion of him, I think. I don't agree with that. I think, yeah, I think for right. his family, he would do anything. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. Do you really see the door? Uh, I don't know. We'll see, bro. To save the daughter. I don't know. Hmm. It's I looking good for Manafort. If uh, Trump Hopefully doesn't have anything to lose, you know, uh, I don't think Manafort will spend much time in jail. Why? Oh, because he'll pardon them. Good luck with that. If he pardons him, he's oh, really going to oh, lose. Only, only when, if, if and when it's over. Yeah, if it's over and then he does it, people are going to bitch and gripe, but, it, but it's, not, it's not obstruction of justice. Right. However, when he, says, power. when he says, I'm thinking about it like he has, okay, yeah. or I would consider it, that is kind of obstruction of justice. What he really should have said was what he what he really should have said was if he didn't want it to be obstruction of justice is well we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. He basically did. He says it's not off the table. Yeah, he well, said it's not off the table. That. That's that that that's obstruction that's of said. justice. That's implying that you're willing to listen. Well, yeah, and and it's no different than and that uh, he's cross not, that and we all know he wouldn't be willing to no listen. He would know we would not be willing to listen if Manafort. You know, squealed like a pig, you know. So he's really what he's doing is he's throwing out the the offer that hey, you know, be a good boy on this deal, and maybe there's a pardon in it for you. you That's know, obstruction of justice. You can only be pardoned if it's federal. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, that state, state, all that shit that New York is doing. Yeah, I don't think right. you can be pardoned for it. State crimes he can't be pardoned for. 
You also can't be pardoned for capital uh, offenses. I don't like know. I don't know if you're right. Didn't he pardon that uh, woman that Kim Kardashian came to the? Yeah, the, uh, the drug uh, deal. Yeah, and that wasn't I, those I, are federal I, charges though. When really? Was that They're a federal, federal charge? Yeah. Federal charges. Really? Yeah. Well, it's worth the Google. Yeah. 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 Google that. If it was federal charges, then you, then the, that point is made. If it's not federal charges, then he can. How how, how would a drug uh, thing be a federal charge well, unless I guess it was it uh, across uh, no, state you, lines. Anything can be a federal charge. It depends on who gets you. You know. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff. But we should all remember that Nixon took the uh, the job of rather than being fired, he decided to what to quit. He resigned. He resigned. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think. Yeah. I think he could do that too. Yeah, but but what happened immediately after he resigned? Gerald Ford pardoned him. Pardoned him. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, uh, look now at our vice president. Well, I mean, Pence could like could pardon him. Yeah. Now, because if, obviously, if something that, happened to Trump huh? and something happened to Pence. The third in line after January would be uh, Pelosi. The Speaker Pelosi. Yeah. So it says here the well, pardon power. Exactly. The pardon power of the president applies only to convictions under federal law. Okay, so uh, do you know if this uh, gal, the well, Kardashian... Well, she would have had to have been. Had to have been, because that's the, the rule. Yeah. He couldn't So pardon. he can't pardon state... Uh, now, governors can pardon state. Well, yeah, I guess yeah. if he runs yeah. for governor... Right. He, he could be Cuomo. He could be Cuomo. Oh, he could? Oh, yeah. Not in New York. Remember, yeah. uh, remember how Cuomo this. Cuomo going to time out? Huh? Doesn't Cuomo term out? I think he probably will term out next time. Yeah. I so the, the governors in New York State have three three terms. No, I, I, don't I don't think so. I think he's only done one other before this, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, really? I thought yes, he did... absolutely. Because you had what's his name, the guy who, client oh, number the blind nine. Guy. No, client number nine. The blind guy is my friend Patterson. Yeah. Uh, right, but then right. he took over because uh, what's his name? Uh, Went to the hooker. The sheriff of Wall Street became Elliot Spitzer. Huh? Elliot Spitzer. Spitzer. Is that his name? Uh, yeah. So he's only had one term, and Spitzer. And, and now he's been a, elected to a second term with a five thousand dollar a night hooker. Is that something? Like, yeah. 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 I would think Cuomo would be more inclined to pardon Trump on the state level than uh, Cynthia Nixon. There's no term limit on governor. No, what's that? No, no, no term. Say limit that again. On yeah, there is in no, California. There is no, no term, term limit on, on governors? New York governor. A New York governor. I didn't governor. think there was. Wow. Yeah. There are some states that don't have term limits on their governors. New the York governor, is one of them. Well, the, the governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, and state controller are elected to four-year terms. State senators, assembly persons are two. However, there's no limit on how many terms any candidate can have. We had, we had, yeah, no, we change. had no term limits. We had no term limits on right, no. uh, on mayor once Bloomberg got the city to pass a law saying he could run again, and so he became a third term uh, mayor. Yeah. Now the the problem was, and this is something we should have learned as a lesson: third term they usually suck, and yeah. he did. He hey, sucked during no, his third no, term. No Coke Zero for you, right? New right. No, no, but he, 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 as Mark he, Twain said, politicians are like diapers that need change for the same he, reason. He, he was a great <laughs> two term mayor of new york third term he sucked you know and i think it's because you get a little full of yourself you know you, of course, yeah. like 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 you're going out going to tilt windmills like you know uh, uh diet sodas or uh, sugar sodas or whatever yeah you needed a guy like Lindsay. yeah yes uh, jeff when the when the vice president would be then become president does he have to be approved by the senator? No, no, no. no. He automatically chain of command he sworn in. Automatic. You remember yeah. when Kennedy was assassinated and they swore Johnson in on the plane? Yeah, yeah just and, chain of command. And let's say, let's say we get to well, when Nixon went, it was Gerald Ford. Uh, right. It would have been Rockefeller, but he knew he was leaving, so he got rid of Rockefeller. But the, the thing was, well, before that, it would have been Spiro Agnew, and he would have been even worse. Uh, but, yeah. the, but the fact <laughs> is that uh, if, uh, let's say, something happens to Pence, like let's say he goes down with all of this for some reason or another, you're right. right. Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi would be president of the United States. And following yeah. her would be president pro temp of the Senate, which would be a Republican. That would pick so, up yeah. everybody. 
Yeah. Boy, so, I'll tell you what. Imagine that. Could you imagine that Pelosi becoming the president? Hey, if Schumer would have went Holy postal crap. the other day, uh, you would have, you know, because they were both in the room. Uh, then you would have had I'll, Pelosi. I'll tell you something. Uh, Pence the other day, somebody referred to him as Vice President Pillow, uh, <laughs> because he just sat there like nothing was happening. It's like, no, no, wait a minute, hold on a second. Said he was Pence, uncomfortable. No, Pence is an uncomfortable. <laughs> Pence is trying I to believe keep, that, Phil. Pence is trying to keep an arm's length from all of this because he knows right. that he may become president someday and he doesn't want to have to be looked upon as Trump's toady. Well, but but he, he I mean, if look, let's put it this way. If he ever runs for president, the Democrats, all they need to do is take out the video of him sucking his dick around the table that time. Oh, it's oh. a pleasure and an honor oh, to yeah. serve. And that's all they got to do yeah. is take that. But out. at this no point, at this point, president. you can tell that the wolves are surrounding the castle because Pence is keeping an arm's length. From Trump, mm -hmm. and in that thing the other day, you could see it. He was just—he yeah. wasn't getting he, he, involved. He always he kept the arms. No, no. Well, before he used to suck his dick every time he yeah. was in public. Yeah, yeah. With, you know. but, but it kind of yeah. surprised me though that Trump uh, lambasted a little on on uh, on Pence though for that. I figured he'd keep his mouth shut about Pence and just did let you, him. Do did you see some of the comedy around the video that some of the late night talk shows yeah. did? Yeah, Colbert was. I wonder what's for dinner that. tonight. I think I'm going to change the wallpaper. <laughs> this rug's got to go. Yeah. Or did you see Colbert <laughs> was great on paper? <laughs> <laughs> was think I'll open an India casino. Yeah. When you think of you know, when you think of uh, Prime Minister Trudeau in Canada in gray sweatpants, <laughs> that was one of the Facebook memes. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you know, With I mean, no shirt on. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that he 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 in the last couple of weeks, it, you can see there's something going on. I think uh, Kelly leaving has a lot to do with it. Oh, I think that he saw the winds of change happening, that you know that that Donald Trump was going to be painted into a corner, or that he's. No, would you like to be his chief of staff? <laughs> yeah, sure. Who? <laughs> uh, Trump. Well, yeah. think about why. Think about why nobody <laughs> wants the <laughs> job because a. You're going to have the wrath of the government coming down on you for every little time you breathe, and b. The only way you're successful in a job like that is to hold up Trump's lies, and everybody around Trump who lies goes to jail, but he can't because he's the president. So it's a, who wants that job? Everybody, you know, a lot of people have been taking the fall for being loyal to Donald right. Trump. Exactly. Some guy named and and, and, the, and the, you forget this one. Jeff Sessions was really a Trump toady for the longest time. He and was look the how first he, one to really come out and support him. And look how he got thrown to the wolves. Absolutely. He does it with who's, everybody. Who's this uh, talk show guy, Piers Morgan? Piers or, Morgan, yeah. Yeah, he, he wrote something that he wanted to be chief of staff. but Everybody's uh, doing Everybody uh, is sending him texts. That I'll be your chief of staff. Uh, sure. I'll keep you honest. I, I, I would, too, and I already have the hat. You know, <laughs> yeah, you've, you've already got the uh, the uh, the Oval Office the wear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, uh, all I'm saying is, is that uh, Pence has is kind of a litmus paper to what's going on there. The fact that he's like arm's length. You know, he was sitting in that room, but he wasn't. They called somebody referred to him as Vice President Pillow. I mean, that's what he was doing. He was just a pillow in that chair. Well, uh, the things I heard was is that he looked uncomfortable as to what was going on. Because uh, he had the cameras on him. He didn't know how to act because he's trying to hold. In uh, he knows how to See, act. See, what happened, what was happening that yesterday guy. with the Schumer-Pelosi thing Talk show. Is, is that Trump was really doing another episode of The Apprentice. He was right. really yeah. doing a reality show. Exactly and, what it was. And... and uh, that's exactly what it was. Exactly. Now Pence, Pence was a talk show <laughs> host, or was uh, did talk he show. do anything? Yes, he was. Radio. Radio. Talk show host. Radio. 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 All right. Uh, so, you know. No, maybe. Uh, you know, maybe he's not used to being on camera like that. No, right? no, no. He wants to. He figures he's next in line, and he doesn't want. He's like just like Alex said. He is beginning to separate himself instead of sucking he, dick, being under the table. Sucking dick like he's done for a year and a half. Now suddenly he's he's attempting he, to be presidential. He yeah. always was. No, I wouldn't say that. He was he was sucking dick, straight up. 
That's oh, his job. President, no, that's I, no his I've job. never seen any other vice president do that. Uh, well, that's because he's the kind of vice president that Trump wanted, which was somebody who was going to support enough, his right, agenda. He's, he's smart enough to know that that's what Trump needs. Right. Well, and that's what they're talking about is they're saying that um, he, if it comes 2020, they don't think that uh, Pence is going to be on the ticket, right? No. Why wouldn't he be? He's 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 done everything right as far as Pence is concerned. As far as well, they're uh, saying Trump that he may not run. He may not run with him. Oh, oh, I see. He's going to separate himself. They, yeah, they may. Okay. I I bet you they'll put a woman on the ticket. I bet yeah, there isn't right. going to be a ticket. Find one. I don't think there's going to be a ticket, Phil. I don't think there's going to be a ticket. The one who was the UN ambassador uh, that just uh, Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley. I I think she's going to run with him. Yeah, but I think oh. other Republicans are going to run too, and he's just go over to Fox and grab one of the other ones over there. He's going to have one off the couch. I don't think he's going to have any Kevin. challenges on the Republicans. Hey, Kevin, no problem. I don't the think he's going to be running. Just go over to Fox and grab a, go grab a one by the pussy. I don't think he's going to be running, and if he tries to run, I think with all the shit that's going to come down by then, the Dem Republican Party is not going to renominate him. No, you know, like uh, there, truck, right? there, there is. Mm -hmm. uh, the, there is such a short memory in this country. People have... That's very, right. Very and if it happened memory. before the midterms, perhaps they would have forgotten. It's going to happen all closer to the presidential race. This thing Because that starts now. Yeah. That's coming to a head. It's coming to a head now, and it's going to be very recent memory to people. And I think you're going to start seeing Republicans jumping ship where Trump is concerned because they don't want his stink on them. Well, they're all starting already now with the with the Saudi prince, right? Yes, the, the Senate came out today saying the Saudi prince did it. We don't want to do business with Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they had some sort of uh, declaration. Well, what kind of a slap in the face is that to Trump, who keeps defending this no, fucking Trump, murder? Trump is saying that uh, economically it makes sense to separate the prince uh, from uh, the other Saudi dealings. So we we believe in murder for hire. Basically. No, we 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 try. We're we're uh, an ally of Saudi Arabia, and the prince. Uh, what he's trying to do is he's trying and to how, separate. And how them have they been Saudi an ally Arabia. to us? Uh, stabilization in the. Uh, oh really? Uh, oh the really? East. Are you calling? Uh, are you calling they, their? They war, are you stuff? calling the wars that they're using stabilization? Well. What do you mean the wars? The, you yeah, mean the, the Yemeni war? Yeah. No, that is stabilization because oh, they're God. they're keeping Iranians oh, from God, uh, from the whole overthrowing uh, overthrowing the legitimate government of uh, Yemen. You mean the way like we threw overthrew the legitimately elected democratically elected uh, Iranian government in the 1950s? That's called me too. Not me too. Uh, uh, no, what that's about? not what about yeah. ism. It is it is an equivalency. We yeah. did. We forced the the duly oh, elected. We uh, 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 we uh, uh, threw out and helped overthrow the elected uh, uh, head of, of of Iran and and put the Shah in their play in his place. And the Shah, of course, raped that country for everything he had. And uh, we became very unpopular in that part of the world. That's why they don't like us, Phil. Nah, uh, there's a lot of other we reasons they don't like us. Uh, yeah, Chile and install. Augusto Pinochet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good example. Under the same pretext. Uh, and Chile before that, the, the Chile before that was Allende, and Allende was a communist, but he was a democratic communist, and it wasn't to the United States' advantage to have somebody held up as an example as a democratic communist. Nobody heard ever heard this existed. Yeah. Well, we know it exists. Is, it exists. It's called Bernie Sanders and uh, Ocasio. Oh, geez. Where, did that, where did that come from? Or to a, a, he a, a like democratic communist. And please, the oil industry. That's fine. But nationalize, uh, nationalize the oil industry against America's interest. <gasps> we can't have that. They did a good job in Panama. Uh, yeah. With uh, Noriega, yeah, right, playing that music in his front of his hotel. <laughs> yeah, anyway, George H. W. Hey, legacy. we've run out of time. What have we done? Well, I've ordered a piece of Absolutely equipment enough. which I probably shouldn't have since I'm on a fixed income. And uh, I turned and, off my GoPro, <laughs> and you, I turned off your GoPro for you. And uh, I found out that my uh, my that uh, maybe Woot doesn't want my. Uh, credit card. Your money. Your money's no good on Woot. It, it doesn't want my <laughs> normal credit card, but it would take my American Express, and yet over at Amazon, I can still charge something on my other on my Visa card. So, 
you know, who knows what was going on. I may have typed something in wrong somewhere there. Anyway, that's it, guys. Boy, it's been fun in a weird sort of way, in an argumentative way. I, uh, uh, I, I love getting into arguments with Brian because he's so spirited. Uh, mm -hmm. And so he, he had strong beliefs. Strong beliefs. By the way, Tony, no, no offense. I wasn't. I was. I was after Alex. I wasn't after you or anything. Oh, yeah. uh, hey, it's, it's a good thing. Oh Ryan well, I'm supposed to take that as. I'm uh, uh, sorry, Tony. I was actually after Alex. Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> By the way, Alex. No, hey, I'm not Brian. Brian no, Brian, do, you, do you have any assault weapons? <laughs> no, I don't. You don't know that. No, what? but 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 I think Brian does. So that's why I'm kind of nice to him. Uh, uh, Phil, thank you very much for your uninformed opinions tonight. And uh, the, you're always welcome. Uh, uh, this is three nights in a row for uh, Rob Alfano uh, yeah. must be getting that time of the year when you got a lot of free time. Uh, and and uh, too Tony, cold to thank, drive in a convertible. Thank you for uh, calling. You know, I'll be honest with you. It was last night. It was monumental with you talking about mm, Trump. You know, mm, maybe I have to rethink yeah. my opinion. I had to come back tonight. Mark yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Jeff, thank you. Thank you, uh, Brian. I love you anyway. You know, uh, you know that. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Kevin, thank you. Uh, yeah. Santa's not being Santa anywhere this year, right? Ooh. No, oh, but I'll show up here. Oh, when's okay. The operation. Uh, Santa might be anyway, practicing. anyway, we got to go. We got to <laughs> go. Everybody, give 20th. a big wave goodbye, will you? There they go, folks. Because we got to go because the next show has to come on. And the next show is The Intersection with uh, Jack Bishop. And uh, then tomorrow night at 930, uh, it'll be uh, The Exchange with Damian Chaplin. Then along about 10 o'clock, I'll be back here. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.